Okay, so how complicated is the space of educational programs and solutions? So, the, I mean, what's behind that framing? Why, is it, why do we frame it that way? Is because um, if we see the problem as there's these millions of young people, their needs vary greatly, and we're trying to provide a set of solutions to, to make our education system no, not so much one size fits all, but actually meet uh, young people where they are and, and meet the needs they have in a better way. How, do, how complicated is the space? And are we currently working in the, at the right level of uh, scale in thinking about that problem? Um, so how complicated is it? So, so first of all, you've got various sectors of education. So, and, and um, by the way, th this, uh, this, this argument in general, I think what I'm presenting here is very, you know, Heath Robinson and, uh, you know, probably individual statements I make are likely to be two times out of how complex something is. And that, there's a lot, of, lot that I'm not an expert in and a lot of detail that I don't know. Um, so let's think of this as a minimum complexity, the things that I do have some visibility of. Um, but it doesn't knock over the overall argument because what I'm, I'm arguing that the disconnect on the one hand is that we've got a, an amount of computation um, appropriate for, you know, um, I think... I think we've got an, uh, units of computation in the hundreds and, uh, and the level of complexity is in the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, I think. So, so there's such a dramatic disconnect between the way we're approaching it and what's needed that we're, we're totally all at sea. And, and what is a one, just to, I'll do a more detailed thing on this later, but a one is can a, if, you, if you had an individual with, with relevant skills as a competent person uh, working on a problem like how do you create a solution for, um, you know, teach key, key stage three students maths. It's the, the example I give in the, um, the discussion paper. Um, so if you had somebody working on that for a year, that's a one. Um, uh, you know, if, if a skilled person could have a decent shot at coming up with a decent solution in a year, that's a one. And in terms of the, the overall shape of this argument, it doesn't really matter if the one turns out to be a two or a three or a half. Um, because you're dealing with, you know, ones versus thousands um, in, ter in, this, uh, in the scale of complexity of what you're dealing with. Right, so um, sectors, I think I've got about 10 on there. Uh, you know, HE, apprenticeships, adult FE, the different key stages, early years. And why do I separate those? Because if you're going to come up with a, with a solution, the solution you come up with for key stage five is probably a different solution to key stage four. Very often it is. So you, you, you and there might be, there's definitely, you know, different solution providers that operate in the FE sector that don't operate in the school sector and so on, because the, it's that different. So that's the first level of, uh, you know, just at the level of sectors, you've got, uh, you know, 10. Uh, now, user needs, what a learner needs if we want to go beyond the one size fits all. So we've got things that are reasonably well catered for now. So academics in multiple subjects, obviously, safeguarding behavior, admin food buildings. Uh, and you've got some things that are, we'd like, probably like to do better, I think, um, we did a consultation, uh, limited consultation in Workstream 1 about areas where 
we felt the education system could do better. And these were some of the things that came up in that. Um, work readiness, financial literacy, character, agency, resilience, let's say, uh, civic responsibility, neurodiversity, and SEND. SEND's an interesting one. I mean, th there might be as much complexity in SEND but, as the whole of the rest of the list put together because th there's, there's, you know, massive complexity. But, uh, you know, let's say there's 10 things on there. But if, it, you know, is it 10? Is it, is it 100? With, with things like this? I don't know. It's more, it, it's more than 10. 10 plus. Um, and then, th then there's categories of solution. So there's, there's more, uh, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So there's more, there's more than one way to provide a program aimed at um, helping neurodiversity at one of the key stages, right? Um, and, the cath and the different categories of solution um, are at different uh, price points. That, 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 it, that is, um, that turns out to be important. So, um, you know, you could, so, so let's take um, work readiness, where the National Talent Academy, one of the um, projects I'm involved in, is in the work readiness space. So what categories of solution are there in, in work readiness? Is it at a minimum? I mean, there's probably a lot more. Uh, but anyway, so you can have, you can have work experience. Uh, in other words, send young people to companies. Online webinars, I've seen uh, approaches like that, boot camps, a physical, mentoring programs, T levels, formal qualifications, uh, blended into the curriculum, online courses like National Talent Academy is, an onla is online courses. And they're at different price points. So online courses, it's, it's just content is a low price point. But if you're doing something like mentoring, um, where you've got, you know, one to one with, with a paid person and, and students, it's a much higher price point. And um, the, I mean, the reason, this, the reason the price points is a practical question. We may in the future, um, and policy needs to take this, the way we approach policy and bringing solutions through needs to take this into account. Let's say, unbeknownst to us in three years' time or five years' time, a new Secretary of State for Education comes in and they're really keen on uh, work readiness and improving that aspect of our schooling, let's say. Um, and we may, we, may, we may feel, or I don't know, someone may put forward the argument, well, mentoring's the way to go. We can show very good results. We want a national mentoring program for, for all young people, and it's going to be half a billion pounds a year, say. And that Secretary of State says, well, you know, I'm mad on, uh, I'm mad on uh, career readiness, but we've only got 50 million. So what are we going to do? So, all right. So we can do a mentoring program for Greater Manchester. And we can really prove out this model works at scale and do some great stuff, but we can't do it for everyone. Or we can do online courses. We can do it for everyone and it can be done for five million. So what do you want? And the, so the price point is a practice, you know, we, we'd like to think money's unlimited, but it isn't. We'd like to think curriculum time is unlimited, that the number of trained professionals covering some of these areas is, un, is unlimited, but it isn't. So there, there are questions of prioritization that where it's helpful to think of categories of solution. The other thing with categories of solution is you, you could have... Um, well, uh, the, our, our white paper talks about how the categories of solution prove themselves out over time or fail to. And they've got to go through three phases that we, we talk about in that model. So in that vignette with the uh, education secretary, we may, it may be, well, we'd, you know, we'd like to do um, online courses, but they're not uh, ready yet. 
So we could, we could theoretically mandate we're going to have that for uh, everyone in the country, but it wouldn't work because they're not, you know, they're not at a, a phase where they're ready yet. So, that, so it's, um, and it's one of the great hacks to, to education reform. We shouldn't be attempting to roll things out at scale that just aren't ready. And the number of things that are ready are in the minority. So um, anyway, that, that may be a whole uh, digression, I'm not sure. But in terms of complexity, well, how many categories of solution? So, so we're, we're let's, let's say there's at least 10. And then what about individual solutions? So if you take one of the, one of the, t the category solutions really, a way of solving that problem at a, in a particular way at a particular price point, partic uh, particular user need. Um, so, but there's more than one way of skinning a cat. There's more than one way of doing an online course. So let me ask you, the, my, my other hat of Sam Learning, doing uh, online GCSE revision and homework programs that are cross-curricular, but one of the other uh, category, one of the adjacent categories that we're aware of is individual subject uh, programs, such as GCSE maths. Um, so how many online maths programs have there been in the last 20 years? And, talk, and, you know, different ways of skinning a cat. I've seen different approaches with where they, where they uh, are. Solution provider is trying to create something good around having a unique pedagogy or an approach to gamification or better reporting for the teacher. And now a lot of solution providers are, are trying different approaches with AI. So, so the, I mean, the, the answer to how many individual solutions of their GCSE maths programs has been over the last 20 years, there could be a hundred. And, and that's, that's in the UK alone. So internationally, it's thousands. And that's just GCSE maths. So if we want to understand how complicated the space is, I've got to multiply 10 by 10 by 10 by 100 or thousands. So it's, it's extremely complicated. <laughs> and uh, the, the complexity is, uh, I don't know, it's either hidden or, or you know, we'll just put that in a box. Uh, it's all too complicated and not think about it. Uh, it, is, it you know, that's kind of where, where we are now. So how are we approaching this now? And we're approaching it through primarily a top-down approach, which we, in our uh, discussion paper or think piece, are critical of and say, can't pos you know, isn't the right approach and can't possibly work. So what I want to talk about now is in terms of thinking about complexity, why have we got one unit of computation where we need a thousand? Um, and this is why. So let's say you take um, the department or the department appoints some outside expert body, the, you know, the EEF or whoever, um, and we want to come up with a solution. And the solution is in work readiness, it's T levels. So how do we know that's the right solution? We, we haven't tried these other things. <laughs> uh, uh, but but um, I, I, I believe T levels are struggling a bit with um, the 20, is it 20% 20 uh, component of work experience, on-site work experience, and they're struggling to scale that. Fair enough. So uh, would a better approach be um, you know what, That's the, 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 this is a sidebar, T levels is a sidebar. Let's, uh, let's stick to the main question, which is if you take a top-down approach, why can't you deal with the complexity involved? And the answer is 
because you can try one or two things. You can, have, you can try one or two categories of solution. And what you can't try is hundreds or thousands of possible solutions within that category. You can try one. And, you know, why does... Um, it, there was huge amounts of, in, in the ed tech, um, in, in the, the era that ed tech came through in the mid 2000s, there was huge amounts of experimentation and different solutions going on, of which a minority like Sam Learning came through and were successful. And there was huge numbers of government initiatives. About four out of five failed. On, and they failed because schools didn't get on board with it. And schools, were, schools, they couldn't get traction in sc at school level. And what I see within the solution provider community is about the same hit rate. You know, when, when, uh, if, a, if, a, if a skilled team, experienced team, put a solution out, it maybe works one time in five. It's not, it's not particularly different with the private sector um, putting a solution out to the public sector. It's ju we are just dealing with inherently a, um, a hit and miss phenomenon. And, it, and it's not broken, you know. We could say, um, I've heard people say, talking about innovation, if we come back to the, the body and the cells, uh, um, well, how can we help more solution providers succeed? It's a very logical thing to say, but, it, but it's incorrect. Um, the correct dynamic for handling all this complexity is that, is that the majority of solution providers should fail. Um, and and uh, taking it to the, the body and cells analogy, we could say, we, you know, we've got these cells in the body, there's all this magnificent complexity and wonderful things happening inside the cell that they're doing, but lots of them are dying all the time. Maybe we could have some solution where they aren't dying, where more of these cells are, um, can live and, and, and that complexity and wonderful thing can be preserved. Unfortunately, that's called cancer. So we, we don't want um, things preserved beyond their, their natural lifespan. We want the, the solutions to fight it out and for the, the ones that really are right to, to, for schools to come through and be successful and for ones that aren't to have a way of, um, you know, of, of, of to allow uh, solutions to, to fail. It's really difficult with a government-sponsored solution for it to be allowed, <laughs> allowed to fail. Um, okay, so that's, is that everything on that? No, one more thing. So what can, what can top down do? What, what, what is the right level of uh, complexity that a government can cope with? And it's, it's probably, it's somewhere like here. It's something like that. So government can cope with, policy can cope with, um, understanding that there are different categories of solutions and what they are, understand that solutions are coming through at different rates and that some are, are ready to, to be scaled up and many are not. And um, Government can, can ensure that there is a healthy ecosystem of solutions being tried. Um, and that's, that's what government can do in terms of complexity. That's what government can cope with. What government can't cope with is being the solution provider, creator in every category. And it can't get anywhere near it. It's thousands of times off in the, you know, the, I don't know how many hundred people there are in the DFE but it's thousands of times off the, the amount of resource. Um, the, the units of computation, which is you know, what a person can cope with in a year, it's thousands of times off uh, being able to uh, meet complex, you know, solve the problem of education reform.
but um, looked at at a higher lens. So, so what we need to do, we need to separate the solution layer from the policy layer. And that's the hack. We need to, we need to keep, not try and do, create, do solutions centrally. We need to have policy happening centrally of the but government's the only stakeholder that can look after the whole ecosystem. And that, that's, I, I think we can have some really interesting conversations in Innovate Ed. We've already had some really thoughtful feedback uh, from uh, Michael Trucano and many others on what is the role of government in um, ensuring a healthy ecosystem where innovation can, can flourish for the benefit of young people um, without stressing the um, system out, which are, um, I did use the word cancerous earlier, approach of top down is, um, is stalled. Maybe cancerous is too emotive, uh, but it's dysfunctional. It's not working. And um, there's, there, there's, there's, an, a, there's a different approach out there uh, where we're dealing with complexity at the right level of scale, which, which can work. And in fact, in the mid 2000s for EdTech was working. So it's, it's been shown to work in the UK. Uh, thank you. That's, that's it for now. I think I'll, there'll be one more in a, in a minute.